Lawmakers targeted for vandalism and threats. After health vote, Democrats report broken windows and menacing messages. Now, that's unfortunate. You should never physically threaten or, or intimidate a member of Congress because one, it's morally wrong. Two, it's illegal. And third, if you do, the member will immediately play the victim card and begin to release toxic amounts of self-pity. You know, dear congressman, you guys did ask for this job, and it's not like your constituents suddenly sprung all these deeply held views on you. Those villagers outside your office with the pitchforks and torches, they've been there since last summer. Perhaps you heard all the shouting. Kill the Bill was not just a catchy rhyme or a shout out to Quentin Tarantino. It was an instruction. When you dismiss your constituents' views, you really shouldn't be all that surprised that your constituents want to dismiss you. But the sudden shift of Bart Stupak and Suzanne Cosmas and John Bocciari uh, and all these other so-called conservative Democrats is useful for confirming a long-held suspicion. The world is full of fine Democrats. The world is full of, even has some Democrats in office who have earned my personal respect, and I've even voted for a few. But despite what you may have heard elsewhere, a conservative cannot count on any Democrat on any issue. They always fold when push comes to shovel-ready stimulus projects in their district. And like Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, Tooth Fairy, and Hanukkah Harry, it is time for us to put aside our naive childhood belief in the existence of conservative Democrats. Now, I can hear the objections. My friends at the NRA are always quick to tout their A-rated friends on both sides of the aisle. And as a nonpartisan organization, they really should be praising both Democrats and Republicans. But I would note that in the House, every so-called pro-gun Democrat voted to make Nancy Pelosi the speaker, meaning she control this F-rated lawmaker controls the floor schedule. In addition, she controls the committee chairmanships, and she made F-rated John Conyers chair of the Judiciary Committee. Now you look over at the Senate, and every so-called pro-gun Democrat, almost every one of them voted for Sonia Sotomayor, and every one of them did vote for Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State. Once becoming Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton quickly ran across the border to Mexico to denounce the American expiration of the assault weapons ban. And also every Democrat voted to confirm Eric Holder as Attorney General, who said the administration wanted to reinstate the assault weapons ban until David Axelrod's pollsters quickly showed up and told him to be quiet about that. Now pro-lifers are learning that when everything is on the line, even the principles of Bart Stupak can be dilated and extracted. Pro-lifers were ready to lose the fight on the health care bill, but they were not ready for that betrayal. It's like watching Davy Crockett suddenly give up at the Alamo because Santa Ana wrote him a nice note. The stimulus, cap and trade, you go down the list and just, you find so-called conservative Democrats knuckling under, or always at least a certain number of them. You'll notice that despite the large number of blue dog or red district or centrist or conservative Democrats, they never seem to have enough to derail a Pelosi priority. They come up short more often than Jason Campbell, or perhaps when it comes to Washington Redskins quarterbacks, Heath Schuler is the more appropriate metaphor. Now, it's important to recognize that if you are a conservative, that even the most rural heartland Democrat is someday going to break your heart like Fredo. And at the end of the day, when it comes to uh, President Obama calling up some Democrat or some Republican in Congress, there will always be one partisan difference. When Obama calls a Democrat, he'll always feel that subtle tug of party loyalty and the honor that the president of his own party is turning to him in his hour of need. Whereas when a Republican gets that call and is, and is inevitably told, Congressman, on this vote, on this bill, my presidency hangs in the balance. Any GOP lawmaker can, should, and probably will say, Mr. President, that's not my problem. Because it's not like the DNC is going to suddenly take it easy on any one of these guys because they did Obama a favor. This fall, a lot of Democrats are going to tell you how independent-minded they are, or how centrist, or how conservative. I'd urge you to take this opportunity to explain, not enough, Bubba. <laughs>